This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol. And men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Marla? Yes, Colonel Rayburn? The Neptunian leader, Tyro, will be arriving on Earth this morning. C has full VIP treatment. I have already arranged it. You remember everything. A Venusian has the facility never to forget. <laughs> that is the landing signal, Colonel. The Neptunian spaceship has arrived. I must go and meet it. It is too late. Tyro is already on his way here. Is it true the Neptunians hate to work? Yes. Their minds are highly developed, but their bodies have become weak. That's why they use slaves. If Neptune joins the United Galactic Organization, they won't be allowed to have slaves. They won't need them. We'll let them have robot workers instead. You said Neptunians are clever, Colonel. So why did they not invent robots themselves? Each planet develops in a different way. Martians knew nothing about science when they joined the UGO, and Venusians knew nothing of engineering. Colonel Rayburn, I am Tyro, the Neptunian leader. Welcome to Earth, Tyro. This is a great occasion for me. It is a great occasion for me as well. I am most anxious to see your robot. I'll show you some immediately. Marla, order my monobio, please. I have already done so, Colonel. What an exquisite creature. Who is she? My Venusian secretary. Indeed. Such a beautiful creature would be treated like a queen on my planet. Please allow me to see her again. She's busy just now. I am not used to being disobeyed. Do as I command. You can't give orders on Earth, Tyro. Now, let's start our tour and... Uh, you called me? Excellency, I wanted to see you again. Marla, go back to your office. She cannot hear you. I have hypnotized her. It's a breach of galactic regulations to use your telepathic powers. Please dehypnotize her immediately. How did I get here? It's all right, Marla. Go back to your office. Sorry, Colonel. Shall we go and look at the robot? This is a radio control room, and one robot runs it single-handed. How many hours do they work? They work non-stop. Every ocean bed is a farm now, and they're all worked by robots. I am ashamed to think we never invented them ourselves. Don't worry. We can let you have as many as you want. Ten thousand to begin with. Excellent. I do not need to see any more. I wish to return to Neptune. So soon? Yes. All oh, this effort has exhausted me. Ten thousand robots for Neptune. That's a very nice order. Marla? Marla? That's odd. It's not like her to disappear in the middle of the afternoon. Radio room. Put out a call for Marla, please. Marla is not in space headquarters, Colonel Rayburn. She was seen boarding the Neptunian spaceship. What? Call the Neptunian spaceship on the sonar beam at once. At once, I say! Venusians are too beautiful to remain on Earth. This lovely creature will be an ornament in my court. Earth is calling, Excellency. I was expecting that. How dare you kidnap my secretary? <laughs> my dear Colonel, she wanted to come. I don't believe you. 
Let me talk to her. Certainly. Marla, come here. Are you all right, Marla? I am perfectly well. Good. Now you tell Tyro to bring you back to Earth. I have no desire to return to Earth. You've hypnotized her into saying that. <laughs> I'll show Tyro he can't make a fool of me. Duty officer here. I want to see Captain Dart. He should be in the restroom. Will Larry Dart report to Colonel Rayburn immediately? I'm on my way. I suppose that means we'll be going on another assignment. Just when I was hoping to go home to Mars. So Marla was hypnotized into going to Neptune. Yes. Are you willing to try and bring her back? Of course. We'll put an electromagnetic field around our gallosphere. That'll stop the Neptunian thought waves getting through and hypnotizing us. But you'll have to leave the gallosphere to rescue Marla, and then you'll be in danger. Hmm, you're right. What we need is a magnetic field around ourselves. Maybe Professor Haggerty can think of something. What's that peculiar machine you're working on, Pop? It's a thought protector, and don't call me Pop. What does it protect you from? Nagging daughters. Mind, it can protect you from other things as well. Why, Colonel, what brings you here? Larry Dart is going to Neptune. And I want something that'll stop him from being hypnotized. You mean a sort of brain shield? Exactly. A brain shield. Hmm, yes, very interesting. I'll work on it, but I don't promise early results. <laughs> Everything. What do you like most? I like everything. She may be beautiful, but she is very dull. I'll dehypnotize the journal, and you will see the difference. Uh, uh, where am I? On Neptune. Why? You've kidnapped me. Take me to Earth immediately, you wicked creature. Oh, that is enough. I'm afraid I'll have to keep her hypnotized all the time. What a pity. Someone is calling on the sonar beam. This is my final warning, Tyro. If you don't send Marla back... Please, Colonel, listen to me. If you can make Marla say she doesn't want to stay here, I'll send her home at once. Marla? Do you want to return to Earth? No. <laughs> you see, Colonel, if you try to get her back now, you will be the kidnapper. Why, you, you... Poor Earthman. He looked as if he were going to explode with anger. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dart, Marla says she wants to stay on Neptune. And if I try to get her back by force, I might cause a galactic war. We must make her say she wants to return. She'll never say that as long as she's hypnotized. Who is it? Professor Haggerty here. I see answer to your little problem, Colonel. If you come over to me lab, I'll show you. Come on, Dart. Now, this is me thought protector. Fix these two little wires on your head, and you can stop yourself from hearing things. But I asked you to work on a brain shield. This is the same. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Well, show me. <laughs> Professor, <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> we can't hear you, sir. <laughs> Professor Haggerty. <laughs> oh, yes, me boy? Why are you answering Dart and not me? And what will you be wanting of me, Larry? Larry doesn't want anything. I do. Sure and all, Captain. If there's anything I can do to help you. Haggerty! <laughs> the professor's trying to prove that his thought protector is a brain shield. He's directed it to your thought waves, Colonel, and he can no longer hear what you're saying. I see. Turn it off, Haggerty. You've convinced me you're right. Tell
Tell him to turn it off, Dart. Uh, switch off the thought protector, Professor. Well, Colonel, are you satisfied? Yes, 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 you win. But can you make it smaller? Larry can't carry all this around with him. I've made two very small ones. They're here. One for me and one for Marla. What about Slim and Husky? They'll have to stay in the Gallosphere. They'll be safe as long as the magnetic field is switched on. They won't be able to help you if you run into trouble. That's a risk I can't help. All right, Dart. Prepare for takeoff. Orbital speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Scan of you are working. Check. Astro beam working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoba rays on. <laughs> All in order, Captain. I'm ready. Course set for Neptune. Speed 500,000 miles per hour. Time we were getting into the freezer. Neptune is so far from the sun, it must be very cold there. The Neptunians use nuclear energy to heat their planet. Stop talking, Slim, and go into the freezer. Yes, Captain. Gallosphere 347, calling Space Headquarters. Am setting automatic time control to operate for four months, 20 days. If an emergency arises, please use your Zergon ray to switch off our time control. Over and out. of Captain Dart. He is very clever. Maybe, but he won't make Marla change her mind. Will he, my lovely creature? I have no mind of my own. All my thoughts are yours. Neptune's on the scanner, Captain. Switch on the electromagnetic field. Or they might try and hypnotize us. Electromagnetic field on. All the radio equipment is dead. They won't work until the magnetic field is off. Change to orbital drive, Slim. Orbital drive on. I'm switching to robot control for landing. sure that brain shield will stop you being hypnotized? It'll do even more than that. It'll stop Tyro from reading my thoughts and knowing what I plan to do. Why are you taking another one? For Marla. Now, where can I hide it? Fix it to your belt. Then Tyro will think it's part of your spacesuit. What about your Molang? I won't need it. The Neptunians have purified the air. Goodbye, boys. Galosphere 347 has landed, Excellency, and the captain is on his way here. What is he thinking? I can't read it. His mind is empty. <laughs> the minds of all us men are empty. When Captain Dart arrives, you will not know him. Yes, Tyro. Welcome to Neptune, Captain. I hope you will be able to convince Colonel Rayburn that Marla is happy here. I'll need to talk to her first. Of course. This evening, I am giving a party in your honor. You will have plenty of time to talk to Marla then. Oh, Captain, one little thing. You are the first Earthman whose mind I have not been able to enter. I'm wearing a brain shield. That protects me. 
I don't believe it. Try and hypnotize me then. You see? Indeed I do. Does it work for anyone? Oh yes, I'll put it on Marla and show you. My lord, don't let him. Silence, Donna. If Captain Dart wants Marla to wear his brain shield, I do not mind. Go on, Captain. Put that little gadget on her. Don't come near me. But Marla, this is a wonderful invention. Let me show you how it works. Don't come near me. Women can be very difficult. I am sorry, Captain. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed yourself, Captain. Well, the feast was magnificent, but the heavy gravity is making me tired. Then rest. Yes, maybe I will. I am tired too. I will also rest. <sighs> not to be able to read his mind. Now, if I can just... What, what is it? What are you doing? Just see if you are comfortable. I'm very comfortable, thank you. It is no good. I can't take it off without waking him up. All this entertaining has quite exhausted me. If only I could get this other brain shield on her. Don't come near me or I will scream. But I'm your friend. Only Tyro is my friend. Go away. It's hopeless. I'll have to think of another plan. Are you awake, Captain Dart? Just about. <coughs> I must be getting back to the Gallosphere. You're welcome to stay here. I'd like to have a word with my crew, but I'll be delighted to return. I don't trust that Earthman. can't do anything to you, can he, my lovely one? No, my lord. You are my master, and the only one I obey. Did you succeed in talking to Mala? Yes, but it didn't do any good. Tyro's hypnotized her so that she won't allow anyone to get close to her. If that brain shield was smaller, you could slip it on her when she wasn't looking. Why don't you examine it, Husky? You are clever with your hands. All right. If we cannot make Mala say she wants to come back to Earth, what will happen? We'll have to leave her here. I've got it. The main part of this brain shield is two pieces of wire. Look. You mean if I put those two bits of wire on my head, I'd still be protected? Yes. Then why did Professor Haggerty make the brain shield so big? He wanted to cover the wires properly. They are very delicate. Indeed they are. They resemble earrings. Earrings? Slim, you found the answer. Husky, can you make these two wire coils look like real earrings? I'll try. What will you do with them, Captain? I'll show them to Tyro and ask him to let me give them to Marla as a farewell present before I go home. <laughs> I've been thinking things over, Excellency, and I feel sure Marla will never be happy on Earth again. Now you're talking sense. Will you tell your colonel all this? Yes, I'll do it at once. There's just one other thing. I'd, I'd like to give Marla a farewell gift. What is it? A pair of earrings. Oh, quite pretty. Put them on the table. I'd, uh, I'd like to see her wear them. Very well. It is all right for Captain Dart to approach you, Marla. My master says you may approach. Are you getting my call to Colonel Rayburn, Your Excellency? 
I will get a sonar beam for you at once. What are you saying? Uh, I was telling Marla how nice the earrings look on her. Ah, oh, Colonel, Captain Dot feels Marla should stay here. You must have hypnotized him into saying that. I'm not hypnotized, sir, but I still think it's best for Marla to remain here. This is some of your trickery, Tyro. It is not trickery. Tell him how much you like it here, my beautiful one. I do not like it here at all. A baby Neptunian princess. I'm not a Neptunian princess. I'm a Venusian secretary, and I want to leave this planet and return to Earth. Well, Tyro, you promised me that if Marla said she didn't want to stay on Neptune, you'd send her back. And if I refuse? You won't get any robots. Then we'll resign from the United Galactic Organization. All right, resign. But without our robots, your people will have to learn how to work. Work? That dreadful word. Our bodies are not able to work. Well, send Marla back. Very well. You win. Thank you. Come on, Marla. One moment, Captain. Tell me how you managed to free Marla from my thought control. The earrings, Tyro. You see, they're the brain shield. Ah. Earthmen aren't so stupid after all. Come along, Marla. Perhaps I will stay here after all. My princess. You mean you stay of your own free will? Yes. Neptunians are scientifically advanced, yet you treat women in a most old-fashioned way. I shall stay here and start a Neptunian suffragette movement. No, you won't. Go home at once. A beautiful creature to look at is one thing, but one that answers back. Oh, no. Colonel Rayburn is welcome to you. <laughs> I've had four different secretaries, and none of them is as good as Marla. Look at all this work that's piled up. Relax, Colonel. She's on her way home. Yes? Captain Dodd is calling you on the sonar beam. Put him on the screen, please. Our mission has been successfully completed, and we're safely away from Neptune. Good work, Larry. Is Marla there? I am felicitous to speak to you again, Colonel. More documents for you to sign, sir. Marla, tell Larry to boost the mesen power and get you here as fast as he can. Otherwise, I'll disappear behind a mountain of paper. Thank <laughs> you.